Pittsburgh, regarded as a vital link between the Atlantic coast and the Midwest, is often called the Steel City due to its rich industrial heritage. The legacy of the Steel City began in the early 1900s when the city's manufacturing plants were generating between a third and a half of all national steel. Steel manufacturing declined following World War II when the city launched its clean air and civic revitalization project to combat high levels of pollution. Mill and plant closures would later cause massive layoffs in the 1980s. One of the things that came out of when we lost the steel industry was a diverse economy. And that economy is based upon innovation. It's innovation in life sciences, it's robotics, it's AI, but it's also the innovation of advanced manufacturing. It's the skilled laborer. It's all of the different parts of what is now part of the Pittsburgh economy that makes people proud when we say it was built in Pittsburgh. Western PA is a very innovative place and we see that through our medical community as well as our technical community, but the drive and the passion around the people who care about Pittsburgh really make things happen. We at the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority are responsible for taking drinking water from what we call surface water, it's the Allegheny River, treating that river water and then that water flows to customers. Lead service lines were used in the city of Pittsburgh up to 100 years ago. We really didn't see them used with any frequency after 1950, and a lot of these pipes have remained in the ground. They were a preferred material at the time of construction. It's a malleable material, so it was easy for plumbers to be able to install a lead service line. Builders at that time weren't aware of some of the risks to water quality that these lead pipes present. Women for a Healthy Environment is a nonprofit organization based here in Pittsburgh. Some of the exposures that we focus on are things in our built environment that we know contribute to health impacts but can be prevented. So lead is one. We do a lot of work in that space in terms of reducing the exposure to lead. During the 80s and the 90s, we struggled to avoid bankruptcy. And just like a person who doesn't have the money to fix a leaky roof, eventually you have to replace the roof. We found ourselves in that situation with Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority, where a disinvestment over decades led to a point where lead was appearing in our water above the federal standard. And Pittsburgh was at a point to become the next Flint. We knew that we had to immediately take action. We rolled our sleeves up and we went to work. As it became apparent urgent action was needed, Women for a Healthy Environment started holding public forums across the city where members of the community could get answers. Pregnant mothers concerned about the health impacts of consuming lead quickly emerged as one of the most vulnerable populations. It was crucial that we could provide a space people felt comfortable and wanted to have a conversation. This wasn't long after Flint and people had concerns and they said, am I going to get a rash from the lead levels in my drinking water? Is it safe to take a shower or a bath? How can I brush my teeth? Do I need to use bottled water? Should I put a whole house filter in and it, that's expensive, how am I going to do that? Partnership with state and federal partners uh, is really integral to making success on any scale on these kinds of issues like lead service line replacement. The funding awards that have been given to us to date on lead service line replacement are through a program called PenVest. They're a financing authority at the state level where we applied. It's a competitive process. It was clear that, that we had a need and they gave us a $49 million award to move forward and replace these 8,000 or so lead service lines. We're working upon limited resources and we were relying on records that often were created at the time of construction. And so if you have a hundred year old home, you have a hundred year old record and things have changed over time. As PWSA sifts through a century's worth of construction records, identifying where lead service lines remain in the city, they're designing a plan to couple lead service line replacements with water main replacement work to save the city time and money. In the meantime, they've provided an income-based repayment program to residents who want to replace their own lead lines ahead of the city's work. We watched some of the crews here replace a water main, um, and they also found some lead service lines in addition. One of the houses back here um, had a party line, which means that one service line comes off the main and it spurs off to feed two locations. So 
The crews are going to replace that lead service line for the customer and upgrade them to a PEX or a copper service line. Here we were replacing the service lines in the city here. Down here we have the curb stop valve. Typically they're 12 inches behind the curb line. From the curb stop valve all the way to the main is the public portion of the water line. Today they're going to be using the mole method and they'll shoot about 30 feet approximately underneath the road so they don't have to open cut the road and save money. If it's lead on the private side, they'll also either use the pool method and replace about 20 feet of copper line from inside the house all the way to the curb stop. And this is the process we're using today and we try to use that throughout the city. We just really take it for granted that we turn on the faucet and we get water out of our tap. With this project, people have begun to understand that there's a whole infrastructure that they frankly never realized happened. They see the pipes inside the basement, they know it comes to their sink, but they don't know what happens on the other side of their home and the connections it makes between the home and the curb and to the main line in the street. And so as a result, many people across the city of Pittsburgh now have a very solid understanding of infrastructure and of water mains and of lead service lines that they never would have had. I think that it's really critical for people to have just that fundamental understanding of infrastructure and why it's so important. Looking forward as we're replacing our water mains and also replacing service lines, we're going to be relying on PenVest and other sources to help us at the very least finance these infrastructure projects at low interest rates. But we're also hopeful for future infrastructure bills or legislation coming through the United States Congress that might be able to, to lower the cost for us to be able to do these programs. As we stand today, we have very serious challenges with infrastructure. But at that very same time, we are building a 21st century water system that will be state of the art for the next 50 years. To the ordinary person, they usually aren't thinking what's below my feet when they're walking on the sidewalk, but there's probably nothing more important than what is happening below their feet. An entire world of networks and systems Everything from the signal you're getting on your cell phone to the water you're brushing your teeth with in the morning. All the things that you don't have to think about, somebody else is putting their life into working to make sure those systems work for you. Since the Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority started their lead service line replacement program in 2016, over 8,000 public and private lead service lines have been replaced across the city. They still have 8,000 replacements to go, and estimate the project will be completed in 2026. Water from the Allegheny River is conveyed across the city of Pittsburgh and delivered to residents. The goal, of course, is to ensure that every Pittsburgh resident is supplied with fresh and clean water to live, work, and raise their families.